This is the director of Improv College in Canada, Vini Francois. Great to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Well, it's an honor for us to have you. You are our first guest. Mm -hmm. And um, we would be very interested in asking you a few questions. Vini, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Vinny Francois. I live in Montreal, Canada, uh, and I run uh, Improv College, uh, which is I'm here at, out of Montreal, Canada, but we have students from all over the world. It's an entirely virtual improv school, so uh, everything happens online. And uh, we have a bunch of teams that perform in various forms, dramatic narrative, comedic narrative, audio only. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun for me and hopefully the students. And we offer classes and, and I've been doing improv for over 20 years, I guess closer to 25 now. And uh, I have a great time doing it and I love teaching it. So that's, that's pretty much how I spend my days. Okay. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you mentioned already, today we are going to talk about comedic narrative. Uh, that mm. will be the topic of today and we are so curious to uh, get your take on it and, and how do you see uh, what comedic narrative is in an improv set. Yeah, I mean, comedic narrative. So, I mean, when people think of improv, they generally think of comedy, like the general public, I would say. You know, whose line is it anyway? And, and, and in even shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm will not have like improv built into it, but they don't have a full script. And so for me, improv is really just a way of doing unscripted theater. It's theater that does not have the rehearsals of a specific script and prescribed characters and all, everybody's following the same exact story. So because it's being created as it's being performed, uh, there's a certain element of excitement and danger there um, where it can blow up in your face. And that's part of the fun too. But when it works, it's so beautiful and magical. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I really do love about it. And so comedic narrative is uh, explicitly trying to do something that will make the audience laugh and tell a whole story, whether it's, you know, something I always liken it more to a movie than a TV show, just because a movie has like, you know, it, you w sit down, you watch the movie, it has a beginning, you meet the characters, it goes through the adventure, and then it ends in a satisfying way or unsatisfying yeah. ways, perhaps sometimes. But uh, rather than a TV, which always has like a bunch of, it wants you to come back and always resets itself. I always think of, for me, uh, comedic narrative has one story and is hopefully trying to get the audience to laugh. Uh, could I ask you on, on that subject, Vinny, what can you give us an example of what could trigger, for example, the, the, uh, the comedic aspect of it? Um, I, 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 that's hard to say because I have different people are going to find different things funny. And so it's, it, it will be like, like what is, you know, the best song? I mean, there's, there's, everyone's going to have their own personal song and there may be sentimental or technical reasons for those songs to be favored. So I think it's, it's whatever the group, uh, and usually I consider improv to be performing group, although of course you can do it solo, but, uh, whether it's two or 10 people, the, whatever the group, uh, decides like they want to have as their voice, their style, their genre or, or form. Um, so then that becomes, you know the the framework to fill it in so if i'm a painter then i'm going to make a painting and i want to provoke something i want to provoke something in someone um then uh, as a improviser and i want to do comedy my goal is to provoke laughter in whatever way i think i can do it with my friends and hopefully you all share a same sensibility uh and and sense of humor and then that that makes it fun for everybody else. And the goal really is to make each other, if you're making each other laugh and everyone's having a good time, then the audience is also gonna have a good time. So I'd say that's probably the biggest key for comedic improv in general, narrative or not. Yeah. Okay. Provoking Thanks. laughter uh, sounds very <laughs> difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's also improv, yeah, it's not stand-up comedy. You can't think about it, you can't prepare it, it's all on the fly. Um, are there any, pitfalls you think um, when doing comedic narrative um, things you can really do wrong you think for example you're very funny but you're not um, how do you see that <laughs> uh, I, here's what I always tell my students is that um, one of the toughest things in improv is to realize that when you're trying to be funny it's one of the least funny things you can do 
Now, what do I mean by that? Is when, when we see someone who's telling a joke or doing something funny in a way that feels artificial or forced, uh, the audience can tell that it's not really organic or natural and it feels like you're just trying to like get a response, whatever it may be. Uh, and hopefully like, oh, I'm going to say something funny now. Uh, and so that that fake comedy where we just, the the performer, just like, I need you to laugh here. Um, that becomes less funny. So the pitfall is when you try to be funny, it's one of the least funny things to do. And one of the things that I teach is just if you relax and don't try to be funny, uh, and you just let the comedy, you just develop that sense of like, oh, this is a funny thing that's going to happen. I don't have to make it happen. It's just part of what is naturally occurring. Then the audience is going to find that much funnier because it feels like it just popped into life rather than someone making it happen. And uh, uh, other teachers uh, uh, have put it as the difference between um, invention and discovery, where if we invent comedy, it, we can see it feels very mechanical and forced and artificial, whereas if we discover the comedy in the moment, it feels much more natural and easygoing and the audience can relax because for an audience to laugh, they need to be able to relax. Okay. So if you're, if you're relaxed, the audience is relaxed too. So the, the comedy is basically generated by showing comedic situations in the team, in the troupe. I mean, there's so many different things that make people mm -hmm. laugh. Surprise can make people laugh. Uh -huh. um, some people like, you know, clever plays on words to make people laugh, and that can be delightful. Uh, funny situations, uh, mistaken identities. I mean, the list for things that are funny is infinite i think uh i mean even if i tried to sit down and come up with a list of things that are funny there would always be something else that someone else would find funny and be like i don't find that funny but they would find it funny so therefore that's funny so yeah i the comedy is i think <clears throat> whatever we find delightful in the moment and it's up to diff different audiences and different performers it's so it's so personal i think um and i think there's if the performers who try to get the audience to laugh because they're like, I'm going to do this thing that I think you will like, yeah. that feels like a very difficult challenge because you don't know what they like. If you oh. imagine what they might like, I think that's part of where the artifice comes in. It feels forced again. Yeah. But if I'm just doing the things that I like and I think are funny and, and I think are like, oh, this is going to you know, provoke laughter in everybody around me and my, my teammates, and yes. then that becomes fun. That becomes way more fun than trying to like, figure out like what do you want well that's not the question that should be asked it's what do i want what do i what is going to delight me what is going to inspire me and my my friends that i'm playing with it's a totally different focus you don't focus on the audience you focus on yourself what do you find funny and you focus on your teammates yeah totally. what do they find funny and how can we make it happen yeah, and, and I'm not saying to totally ignore the audience, too, because they're giving you feedback, especially when we're performing live. But when, when you say something and the audience laughs, then uh, the audience is telling you, oh, I like that. And so you can just be like, okay, this is good. This is feedback that I can do more of this. And then the audience can really enjoy it. Um, and when they're not laughing, you're like, all right, I can drop this and try to find something else. And so there's, it's a give and take of the energy of, of the audience and, and the performer. Thank you, Vinnie Francois from the Improv College for this uh, great chat about comedic narrative. And this is only the first one of three episodes where we are exploring a number of topics with you. So in our next video, we will talk about characters and creating a safe space. And this was the end of the first episode of Summer Sand Chats about Improv. See you soon.